welcome back to another episode of Backyard Builds. This week on the wagon, this is where I meant to introduce to you that we are doing the fuel system and fuel lines from last episode, but we've run into a bit of a snag. I decided that it might be a good idea to throw the diff back in, rear suspension with that new tank and make sure we have clearance. Well, we don't. None at all. And we're pretty close up on the shock as well. So, three options here. One is build a new tank, which would be a waste of the tank I bought. Two is modify the tank I have, which would be a waste of a new tank. Or three, is go and do something else for the day. But, I really want to get this in. Um, I don't have material to build a new tank, so it's probably going to be modify this one. What my thoughts are is to take a slip out of there and then move that back and mold it up. That means I retain that. I can retain my factory pickup. Not that we're using the factory pickup, but I would like a fuel sender in the car, which is all in the pickup assembly. So, those there are the options. Let's give it a go and, and see what we can get done. So, I've actually taken the tank out now, and we have got it up on the bench. As you can see, we've got a blue line on it now. What this is, is just... Um, Masking tape, actually. So, from what I can work out, we need about 25 mil. So, this rule is really crappy, but this is one inch masking tape. So, I've marked it all the way around, straight. And what I'm gonna do is actually use that as my guide for my grinder. So if I cut one side of the tape and cut the other side of the tape, we should pretty well butt back up Probably gonna cut the hole for the sump as well. Um, it may come in handy when trying to tack this back together. Really don't want to cut this tank up, but here's what it is. Gotta make it work sometimes and just make it happen. Cut that up. I will give you the big grinder montage. Um, just cut it. We'll have a look at it once it's back together. Then we have a 25 mil section out of our tank. Now I'll just go around with that pender burr again, knock all these sharps off, give it a good wipe out, and then we'll take a bit of this coating off just with a seaweed wheel strip disc, just so we can get some good tacks on there, tack it up, and then go and test fit it to the car. Make sure you get all the burrs out and all the grinding dust because you don't want that going through your fuel system. That will clog up carbs and filters. Definitely don't want to go through the pump either. So it is still, will probably rust. So I'll just give the, uh, this inside of the tank a bit of a clean. So I'm just gonna use some brake cleaner in a Worth bottle. It is Worth brake cleaner. Pretty good stuff actually. Um, pretty expensive, but good. So I'm just gonna give her a good old spray and a wipe out with a brand new microfiber cloth so I don't put any more dust and dirt. I'll tack it up. We'll go and make sure it fits in the car. Then I'll probably cut the tacks and then we'll cut the hole for the sump. And then we also need to put a dash eight return into the top corner of the tank. So we'll do that while we're here. potentially go through your pump and your filter, which is less than ideal. So 
really going for this like vlogging style <laughs> when we're filming by ourselves but it seems to be working and you guys seem to be enjoying it so thanks again for watching um i've actually just tacked the tank back together so a couple little tacks there as you can see our gap is really good that tape trick works really well because even if the tape's not straight you're still following both edges so I'll clip it over as you can see awesome gap all the way along can be really easy to tig back together so when i tig it i'm not going to actually sand the welds i'm going to actually leave them proud and then we'll get it powder coated in a texture um, probably a black texture just to hide it under the car so you can't see it but our next job before i weld all this up because i want to be able to clean it out properly is i'm going to put this sump in so what a sump is 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 essentially making a new low point of the tank for oil pickup or fuel pickup sorry so what we've got is some weld in an fittings so these are dash 10 so they're huge i'm gonna put two in one's for feed and one will be for drain but could potentially be a second feed for a second pump if this car ever goes to efi so when building a car don't limit yourself to your current plan because it may not be the final plan for the car so having two just gives us that flexibility later even to run like into a swirl pot or something so but for now we'll just put a cap on it and it can be a drain so if we ever want to run e85 it's easy to get the 98 back out of it i'm going to put a mount on the gopro and then i'll explain how we're going to actually measure for our sun okay so here is our an fitting so what i got done was we machined it down just a little bit so it was hex all the way so machined it down with a three quarter step in it why you might ask it's because i can now drill a hole in a sump and that's going to locate center on the hole whereas i would have been trying to align it blind so that's something you just need to have a look out for when you're uh buying fittings you can buy them already stepped the aeroflow ones aren't just like to take a big shout out to engine masters who help supply all of the an fittings i've got quite a lot so what we're going to do is just take a measurement here 25 mil so realistically the sump should be 25 mil i know that this on the right hand side is my bottom so it's flat so what we're going to do is we're going to measure to where 25 mil is on the square which is there so i now know our sump needs to be that long and that deep so i can now take a measurement from here to here i should grab a better ruler and then i will know that that is 165 and 25 tall and we'll just take the width we'll probably just make it 100 mil wide and we'll cut a hole in the box in the tank so from those measurements we took we made up our little sump box so we can now mark it what i'm going to do before i mark it but is i'm going to actually weld the fittings into the box because it will be a pain in the ass to do it up after Ooh. just thinking it might be a bit tight under here but in saying that we can still cut the back of the tank off and weld across the front there. so let's put the fittings in and we'll go from there so two and we'll drill some three quarter holes for them so we've drilled our two holes as you can see they're right into the radius which is what we're after because the way the fitting is designed i want to be able to get as much fuel out of this as possible because it's probably going to use a shit ton Penderbur again it's always good practice these are pretty cheap really good for holes you can get cheap to burrows as well so try and knock as much out as possible so you've got no burr on the back side and then our fitting goes in and it's nice and flush so 
yeah, we'll get a really good weld all the way around. And then we'll have to weld the tank sump from the inside of the tank, so we'll still have to knock that off. If you weren't, if you didn't have access like I do, you'd probably make that a lot deeper so you can still get a weld in there. But that's all this needs to be, so that's what we're going to run with. So I've got one fitting welded in, and just doing the second one now. So I've actually had to change my ceramic setup on my TIG, so I've actually gone to a gas lens. So as you can see, we've got a lot of stick out there, which means I can get right down in to that point there with good gas coverage. So lenses are great for that, for running huge stick out. So that's probably 20 odd mil out of my ceramic. So just get in there nice and deep, run back out. So I've got the fittings welded in now. So nice and warm, lots of lap uh, over the top of stop starts to make sure that there's no pinholes. One thing I've just gone and done is gone inside and just grabbed a 90 degree fitting. What I'm checking for is clearance up under the bottom here to make sure that we can get a spanner on it and the nut's not going to foul on the actual tank. So now that that's all good, I've gone and marked the perimeter. So what I'll do now is I'll now cut that hole out and we'll start to tack the sump in. So this is a bit of a case of where I should have taken my own advice and made that taller. Well, I forgot that the spare wheel cut out was in there. So I was going to weld it from the inside, but now I've got no choice but to weld it from the outside. Luckily enough, I'll be able to do it with that gas lens. I'll just check the stick out and we should be okay. As far as fit up goes, that hole that I just cut, it's pretty bloody good. So nice weld along there, really nice welds down the sides, and then we'll get up under here and sort this out. But as you can see, quite a nice fit. It sits there on its own. Really happy with the fitment of that. If we take our straight edge again, as you can see, no air gap. That now means that that is the same height as that, which is the same height as that. So we should get all the fuel out of the tank. Looks really cool with AN fittings in it. So give that a bit of a hit with a strip it disc, and then uh, I'll take that in. Probably weld it up. I'll take that off, clean the inside of the tank right out, and then tack and weld all that back up. Okay. So, I've welded the sump in. So, it's really hard to get up under there. I really wish I had taken my own advice and made that taller. But anyway, it is what it is. You live and you learn. Hopefully you don't make the same mistake. So, we've now got the tank all tacked back together. Little 10 mil increments all the way along. So I'll go ahead and I'll weld that out now. We've also done a leak check across the front because it's really hard to get into. So just mixed up a bottle of soapy dishwasher liquid and we blew some air through it. I would have filmed it, but it's really hard to do both. And I got my brother out to help me and he doesn't like being on film, so. All right, so weld a thon now. I weld all the way around both sides of the tank, so I'll get into it and go from there. So I've got the tank welded up. It uh, took a little while. It's dark outside now. Actually went through like four lengths of filler rod. Um, so I haven't actually sanded any of the weld down. In the corners here, we ended up just nigging it um, because of the gap of that step, but I panel beaded it pretty flat. So the flange sort of lines up. Makes it look pretty nice. So, just gonna leave all the world proud. It's gonna get painted in a texture like that um, Raptor liner. We'll get it powder coated. But also got the sun all welded up. So I'm really happy with how that looks in there. I like the shape of it. Um, pretty nice and tight on there. So I'll have to go and get some stainless caps. Um, hydraulic fittings um, are actually work really well. For AN fittings, you can actually get hydraulics. I've got some here actually. So they're actually dash eight, but they are hydraulic and they're steel. So a lot tighter than a standard full swivel 90, which this is. So 
that's a thing to keep in mind as well, is there are other options apart from stainless fittings. But if you do need any aeroflow, make sure you hit up Engine Masters Australia in Albury. Ash and Mark and the team down there do a really great job, so make sure you let them know. Next step is we'll refit this with the diff, make sure we're all happy. Then we'll leak, test it, which I'll go through tomorrow, and hopefully it's all good. I don't need those caps first to plug those up, and we'll do a leak test. Good to go. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> what we're doing, we're just gonna check that the tank's not leaking. So we're gonna use tank. Just, just let me explain what we're doing. <laughs> So we've got some soapy water and compressed air. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to actually, we've plugged the hole, I went and got some hydraulic caps. So we'll leave one in permanently and one will be for our fuel line. So we can actually use that as a drain as well. So soapy water. And what we're going to do is we're going to squirt along here like this. And then we're going to blow some compressed air in and see if there's any bubbles come up. So you'll need that rag. You'll need to plug the hole. Hold it. So we're looking for any bubbles and we haven't got any. All right. What's the code word today? TRT. All right, TRT mechanical. <laughs> we got Mill. Thank you, Mill. Yeah, any Mill. Alright, so we'll uh, check this, but thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, <laughs> and we'll see you next week, won't we? See you then.